miracles. Genesis 16. Now Sarah, Sarah Abram's wife, Mary had no children, and, and she had a handmaid an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. You, you don't just give your, your man to another one. Come on now. That, that's not reasonable. You, you don't just do that. Not, not in Bible days. You just don't do that. Come on. This woman who has a promise, this woman who has had destiny placed upon her, now she says, you know what? I can't have a child. I'm, I'm getting old. I'm barren. Maybe, maybe God wasn't really talking to me. God wasn't speaking to me. You don't just get man to another one. And that's not, that's not logical. A woman intimidated her. You mean? Come on, A woman, the facts, not a hype, not a, not a hypothesis, not a theory, a barren womb. An impossibility intimidated her. And I don't know how you feel about it. I see that as pretty logical. Yeah. You're barren. You can't have children. What's she going to say? She's going to shake her head, yeah. And she's going to say, you're right. Now, I don't know how you feel about this, and this is my personal opinion. Abram's a man of God. I believe Sarah is a woman of God. I don't think they took the promise of God lightly. I don't think they just discarded it. I believe there was a war that went on between Abram and God and Sarah and God in their minds. Sarah was saying, I'm 90. I'm buried. But there was a promise. And she said, but you know, Sarah, God spoke. And I can see Abram as he goes down to that altar and he's walking on to the field. And he's saying, God,
preaching to anybody. Come on now. Sarah says, I didn't laugh. She was afraid. The angel said, no, you did laugh. Yeah. I heard you laugh. They won't call that boy Isaac. Isaac means laughter. I don't know how you feel about this text, but it is lit me up. She's walking around the barren womb, but that barren womb is filled with God's promise. She's walking around 90 years old, but she's walking around with the promise of God of all. Come on. You know what some of your problem is, uh, as, your, as your father, the Lord, as your, as your shepherd, whatever you want to call me? Some of y'all's problem is you listen to the barren woman way too much. You're too practical. Have a prayer, buddy. Think of you and you a nice person. I can't say what I'm going to say. I'm a pragmatic and a listening. I'm, I'm, I'm a thinker. Yeah. And sometimes you walk up to a barren woman. And a barren woman says it's impossible, it's impossible, and it's impossible. And you go to Google and you research it and Google says it's impossible. It doesn't matter what Google said. It doesn't matter what Granny said. If Granny says it can't be, it doesn't matter what Granny said. But God said it shall be. I want you to listen to me. You're going to have more times. You're going to have moments when you struggle.
that stuff. So what? Who cares? Man? Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Boy, if you were talking about me, they're already talking about you. They're talking about you because you're not doing nothing. Come on, man. You don't talk about me. I won't be talking about I've been pulling the trigger. Boom, 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 boom. Made a hit two or three. I shouldn't have hit. But at least I was doing something. If they're going to talk about it, they don't talk about it because we swing too much. Not because we're laying up in a closet somewhere high. But we have been intimidated. We can't take a city because it's too much. I can't have a good marriage. It's too much. I can't be a good father. It's too much. I can't be a good wife. It's too much. And the enemy stacks it up.
come to a plateau because you don't believe you can go higher. We don't believe it. You don't believe it. You've been programmed your whole life. You've been taught your whole life. You can only go so high. That's as high as you can go. You can't do any better than this. This is all you're going to ever be. This is the way it's going to always be. You can't go any higher. You can't go any deeper. A church can't have a certain thing. I'm telling them we're taught that our whole life. And it doesn't matter what God says. We preach to you on tongues for a We tell you the promises of God. We tell you that God is with you. We tell you that God wants to use this church. But again, you say, who am I? And the first thing that happens, 
The first thing that happens is David's oldest brother, Eliam. He says, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart, for thou art come down, thou mightest see the battle. Do you know what Eliab is doing? He's intimidating David. I want you to watch what we'll see when I have it here. This is amazing to me. I know you. You got your few little sheep, but don't you like to go do that, that little church? They sing that little song. They preach that little sermon. Try to ridicule them. Oh, he's got his little church. Well, you ain't got one at all, so what you talking about, buddy? You got them few little sheep in the wilderness. Why you leave them for? I know your pride. I know the naughtiness of your heart. But now you've come down here just to see what's going on. You ain't got no business down here lying the big tall guy. The one that the prophet looked at and thought, well, no, and God said he's not the one. Should have been, could have been, but he wasn't the one. Because God sees the heart. You see, David now standing in front of a brother who is proud. I want you to watch what happens. This is basically what he's saying. I can't take Goliath. Who are you? I can't do anything with Goliath. Who are you? What can you do with Goliath? You know, the thing about it that gets me is that David leaves Eliab and he walks down to the king and he asks him what's going on in King Saul. He says this to him. Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. You know what Saul's doing to David? He's intimidating him. It sounds totally different coming from Eliab as it does coming from Saul, because, because Eliab is just is proud. Eliab is saying, if God can't use me, he can't use you. You better watch out. Right. God will use somebody you never thought he'd use while you're standing over and drinking sweet tea and eating crackers. And you're going to say, wouldn't the Lord want to use me and end up conquering kingdoms and build churches? And you go over scratching your head wondering how they did it. And when it's all said and done, you've done nothing. God's used them to do everything. God will use unlikely people that do incredible stuff. Somebody shout amen. amen. Life says if God can't use me, how can he use him? I've seen a thousand people like that. So holy, God don't use me. Why would He use Him? Because you're too busy looking in the mirror, talking about how holy you are. And He's over with pig out. He said, God, I may not be much, but I'm yours. That's why God says, God can't use you, son. And I hear what Saul, Saul says, He's too big for you. You know what Saul's actually saying? He's saying, David, Saul's too big for me. And he's projected his fear upon David now. See, I've been preached too long and I don't have time to work this out. Every time I've ever made a move in the kingdom, I've had a lie and I've had Saul. Why are these men trying to intimidate David? You would think that a lie would want somebody to go down there and defeat Goliath, wouldn't you? Right. You would think that Saul would want somebody to go down there and defeat Goliath. But they are all intimidated. And when David walks out there, he don't have a shield. He doesn't have a sword. He doesn't have anything. He's got a rag and a rock. And he says, where's he at? Is there not a cause? Are you hearing this big thunder here?
Shall we? 